Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a septic or haptic equation because we have the seventh power. But an easy one because we don't have a septic or haptic equation. Unfortunately, we don't have a hexic equation and we don't even have a quintic equation. How sad is that, right? We only have the quartic, the quadratic and the cubic. All right. So, but this is a special one and we're gonna solve this problem in two different ways. If you're new to complex numbers, go ahead and check out my lecture videos. I made a playlist. I go over basics of complex numbers and ask a lot of questions. If you like algebra, numbers theory and trigonometry and maybe a little bit of geometry, go ahead and check out my other channel, my very first channel, Cyber Math, Cyber with an S, okay? All right, let's go ahead and proceed with the video after this brief commercial. So we have z to the seventh power equals z. So first method, we're gonna go ahead and use the polar form because why not? A lot of times I do problems without using the polar form and my audience, my viewers, almost always say that, hey, why don't you use the polar form? It's a lot easier and I totally agree, but sometimes I forget. I miss the obvious a lot of times and I make mistakes. Don't forget that, okay? So, we have z to the seventh power equals z. To be able to solve this, we're gonna replace z with its polar form, but we don't know what it is, so why not write the z as r times e to the i theta? Now, going into the basics real quick, here r is called the modulus or the absolute value, which is basically when you plot a complex number in the plane, in the argon plane, you will get two things. The distance from zero, and the angle it makes. Of course, that's RZ, right? This is called the real axis and this is called the imaginary axis. And the whole thing is called the argon plane. This is how you spell it because a lot of times people thought that D was silent. I don't think so. Argon plane. Okay, whatever. So those two things uh, we're gonna need, but how do you find them? That's a good question. For example, if Z is equal to A plus B I and its argument is theta, oh, by the way, I forgot to say, Theta is called the argument or the angle. Argument is just an angle here. And if Z can be written as A plus B I, then tangent theta, which is the tangent of the argument of Z, can be written as B over A from trigonometry. From the Pythagorean theorem, R can be written as square root of A squared plus B squared. But of course, these happen in standard form. What about this form? Well, you already have the R and theta, so you don't need to worry about it. It's cool. But we know tangent theta, okay, what is theta? Well, if you do a little bit of focus focus, our tangent inverse tangent function, you should be getting uh, theta equals arc tangent or inverse tangent B over A. But this is not always true because if you consider the unit circle, there are two angles that have the same tangent and they are pi radians apart. So we kind of need to be careful to, and make sure that our tangent is a well-defined function. I hope you know what I'm talking about. If not, always ask questions and I'm pretty sure somebody will elaborate. Okay, so we're gonna use this uh, theta thing now, but I mean, we don't even need to do that because we're just gonna use the polar form. Okay, let's do it. We have z to the seventh equals z. I'm gonna replace z with r e to the i theta and then raise it to the seventh power. How nice is that? It makes things a lot easier thanks to Euler because Euler is the best. He is the greatest mathematician of all times in my opinion and he did amazing things and he came up with the most beautiful formula. I mean, no one else could come up with the most beautiful formula. That's why Euler is the best. And sorry about that if you can hear that car revving in the background. We have some neighbors that have muscle cars and so on and so forth. And they just like to go around, vroom, you know. Anyways, so, and that's my alarm. Always, you know, Murphy's Law. If things can go wrong, then they will, right? Okay. So, uh, let's go ahead and proceed with the problem after all these distractions. So, we're going to go ahead and now raise both sides to the seventh power. But how do we do that? To raise both sides to the seventh power, we're just going to do R to the seventh. And here it's just a matter of multiplying the exponents, right? I don't know if you can hear it, please. I apologize if you hear it. 
Now, we're going to go ahead and do this. What are we trying to solve for z, right? So we, knew, we need two things, r and theta, okay? So we could probably just try to divide both sides at least, or maybe put everything on the same side, right? That would make sense, wouldn't it? If you cancel out things, you may lose some of the solutions. So don't do that. But now I can see that, okay, I can factor out r times e to the i theta. Inside the parentheses, we're going to get r to the 6 times e to the power 6i theta minus 1 equals 0. Beautiful. Now, from here, what am I getting? <laughs> Two things. This can be 0 or the other can be 0. This means r e to the i theta is 0. Obviously, e to the i theta can never be 0 even when theta is 0 or even complex. So r has to be 0 as a result. And r equals 0 implies z equals 0. That's interesting, right? A chain of uh, implications. The thing is, there's only one complex number with 0 modulus, and that is 0. 0 is a complex number, which is kind of like the uh, identity element of addition. It can be written as 0 plus 0i. It's not nothing. It is 0, okay? Don't call it nothing. 0 will be offended. And I just just to prove that 0 is not nothing is... If you raise 0 to the power 0, you get 1. You don't believe that? Check out the video that I made. I'll try to share a card right here. All right, so what do we do? We're going to go ahead and proceed with the other solutions. Okay, we have to solve this. r to the 6, e to the 6, i theta equals 1. Now, what does that mean? Hmm. That's kind of interesting, right? Well, we can write 1 in polar form. So that's the, called the complexification of uh, one. It kind of reminded me of the movie uh, Braveheart. Tomorrow we shall see uh, your purification. But anyways, that's a different story. If you've seen it, it's a beautiful mo movie. I've probably seen it like seven times. Anyways, I don't know. I digress. Okay, let's get back to this. So one can be written as one times e to the power two pi ni. Nice. Now this is really cool because we can now compare the moduli moduluses, right? r to the 6 equals 1, but r cannot be negative, so from here r needs to be 1. And then from here, we get that 6i theta is 2 pi and i, and i cancels out, and of course you can divide both sides by 2 as well, and we get n equals, what? Oh, I'm sorry. We're trying to solve for theta, not for n. Theta equals, oops, sometimes the pen gets stuck, equals pi n over 3. What does that mean? It means that if n is 0, theta is 0, but we already talked about it, right? Did we? Probably not. Anyways, you get the idea. n equals 0 gives you theta equals 0. And of course, r is 1, so it's going to be e to the 0, which is 1. So z will be 1 from here. If n is equal to 1, you're going to get theta equals pi over 3. And then z will be 1 times e to the power i times pi over 3. Let me tell you what this means. If you go out and use Euler's formula, this will turn into cosine pi over 3 plus i times sine pi over I mean, there's nothing more beautiful than that. Think about that. Like exponential, sine, cosine, i all together. It's amazing. And cosine pi over 3 is, think about it, cosine 60, which is 1 half. And then this is root 3 over 2 multiply by i. So this is just one of the solutions, but we'll get to the details uh, with the second method. So let's go ahead and uh, leave it for that. But you can get the solutions n equals 2, n equals 3, and so on and so forth. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second method. By the way, let me tell you something. If you divided both sides by e to the i theta times r, then you would be losing some of the solutions. So be very careful with what you do, especially in the complex world. So here's how the second method works. We have z to the seventh equals to 7, right? I mean z, not 7. My z looks like 7, but it's a z, as you can tell, right? Because this is my 7, hopefully. So to solve this problem, why not subtract z from both sides and then factor out a z, because you can, and then factor this using difference of two squares and then difference of two cubes and then uh, sum of two cubes and so on and so forth. Guess what that's going to give you? That's basically going to give you this septic function or polynomial in factored form. 
And isn't that amazing? We are able to factor this fully, like all the way down to the quadratics, to the roots. So now look at each factor set equal to zero. From here you get z equals zero. From here you get z equals one. From here you get z equals negative one. By the way, you would get that at certain point. And then these will give you the cube roots of one and negative one in you know um, different forms. And you can find the rest, right? Because this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to check out CyberMath. And bye-bye.